The ABC wishes to advise that this Chaser news alert contains gratuitous slapstick, Paris Hilton references, and classification jokes. It also contains material that will offend anybody it possibly can. This Chaser News Alert is proudly brought to you by the Loan Shark Bank, tailoring banking to your kneecaps. The hilarious new BBC comedy, The One Ronnie, and Channel 9's The Alice, the most critically acclaimed drama ever to be moved to 11.30pm. And speaking of obscure programs no one watches, welcome to another Chaser News Alert. I'm Julian Morrow, and making news this week, Richard Branson welcomes stewardesses aboard his equal opportunity airline, Virgin Grey. Kim Beasley records his lowest ever opinion poll figure until next week. And the world's press heralds Germany's first ever female chancellor. But to our top story. The ACTU petitioned the federal government this week in an effort to quash workplace laws requiring employees to agree to individual contracts. We cross live to Chaser correspondent Andrew Hansen Andrew, I believe you yourself have signed an individual contract to work for Chaser News Alert. Hmm? Sorry, I'm not thinking straight. I haven't had a meal break in the last 36 hours. Yes, you uh, seem to have a lot of paperwork to get through there. Oh, and so, so much other stuff too. I'll only get to this paperwork on Christmas Day. Andrew, unionists say these contracts could reduce workers' take-home pay. Well, it doesn't matter to me. I never go home. Well, the Industrial Relations Commission has issued... Julian, a... but before you go on, I, I beg you... Please, tell my wife and kids I love them very much. I don't know when I'm going to see them next. All I know... Is... Uh, Andrew, are, are you all right? Yes, it's all right. I've forfeited my OHS rights. Ah, I'm sorry, Andrew. I've just had word from the ABC board that you've been sacked without notice. Thank you. To Indonesia, then. And the Bali Nine entered a plea bargain this week in which they agreed to the death penalty in return for $5,000 cash. The offer was accepted on the eve of the trial, after which the Bali Nine are widely expected to become the Bali Zero. I'm joined live from Indonesia by the Chasers, Dominic Knight. Dom, what are the odds of the Bali Nine surviving the firing squad to be able to claim their $5,000? Better than their odds of getting through customs with huge wads of heroin strapped to their stomachs. I believe Renee Lawrence insists that heroin was strapped to her body by airport baggage handlers without her knowledge. Yes, that's what Chappelle Corby's mum thinks. Thank you, Dom. And news just in, the executions of the Bali Nine will be outsourced to Jamar Islamia, the traditional enforcers of the death penalty to Westerners in the region. But to sport now, and this week's cricket super series saw attendance records sink to an all-time low as players on the field outnumbered the crowd. I'm joined by Chaser Sports Analyst Chaz Lichardello. Chaz, I believe the average attendance figure was a mere eight people. That's right, Julian. Although it's tough to tell the exact numbers because many of the World Eleven team themselves were spectators. Now, Ricky Ponting said it was great playing to a home crowd. Yes, well, most of the crowd were from Ricky Ponting's home, Julian. And Chaz, the World Eleven is supposed to represent the rest of the world. How have they reacted to the team's poor performance? Well, Julian, you have to understand that throughout the world, most people don't play cricket, and uh, the World Eleven represents them well. Thank you, Chaz. That's all for now, but tune in to next week's Chaser News Alert for all the big stories, including Bob Carr denies that his new job with Macquarie Bank betrays Labor voters any more than his political career did, residents of New Orleans visit Pakistan for a looting holiday, and baffled doctors declare Katie Holmes' pregnancy Mission Impossible 3. That's on your next Chaser News Alert.